from the WWE Holiday Week on USA, this is Monday Night Raw. to know what's what's going on with Monday Night Raw. I'm sure you've asked that question. Well, we're out here tonight because um, we haven't been doing a very good job for you lately. We haven't been doing the one thing that my father has always taught us to do, and that's listen to our audience. We've let middle managers air their petty grievances. We've been suffocating our superstars, and all of that is going to change, and it starts tonight. We're off to a fresh start. The days of absentee management are over. As of now, the four of us will be taking back Monday Night Raw. question why oh why after everything i said and after everything i did why did i come back see for far too long you've been fed scraps for far too long you have been given what i feel you're entitled to i'm here to give that to you i'm here to make this fun again I'm going to make this fun again for everybody. Uh, am I a little bit unorthodox? Am I unpredictable? Do people get scared when CM Punk shows up with a microphone? You damn betcha, man. And I'd have it no other way. The WWE Universe spoke. They said they wanted CM Punk. And I put my personal feelings aside and gave them CM Punk. up on that too personal feelings it was I, meant it, it was meant to be a compliment just take it as that no wait a second i just because you're wearing a suit now please don't hide behind it personal feelings i really am interested to know now but just uh, as everybody here is i want to know personally what what your feelings are for cm punk My feelings are, personal feelings are irrelevant, but if you insist, I think that you're a smug, overrated, attention-seeking, guy that puts a little bit too much stock in his own hype. Not that that's a bad thing. Yeah. This pipe bomb is about to go off in the forest. I want you around so you can hear it, okay? I'm just getting warmed up. See, I don't want you to think that just because I signed my name on a WWE contract, that means I'm going to shut up. I don't want you to think that I'm going to tow the company line and spit out some PG doctrine. I'm not going to promo class. 
I'm not going to media training. I'm here to stay and I'm here to do things my way. And you want to talk about egos. You want to talk about egos? Well, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, let's talk about egos. Let's talk about you hogging the spotlight so many, 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 many times over people who deserved a spotlight. Let's talk about the fact that even when you were carrying Shawn Michaels' bags, that you like to throw your weight around and push people and tell people what to do. I mean, how many times do you tell people what to do? Wait, wait you know what? Don't answer that question. Answer this question. How many times did you say, well, you know, I just don't think he has what it takes while you're lying in bed with your wife? See, no matter what, if you're wearing a $5,000 suit, if you're in your wrestling gear, if you're dressed up like a low-rent poor man's Conan, you are the same guy that you've always been. You're a bully who likes to throw his weight around and push people. And I'm not picking a fight. I'm just saying be careful who you push. Because you know I like to push back. You're going to... Uh, you gonna beat me up? Huh? You gonna fight me? You gonna punch me in the face? Or do you gotta go ask your wife permission first? Wow, what an incredible week we've had in the WWE. What an incredible edition of Monday Night Raw. When they announced that Vince McMahon was returning and they were going to have some kind of shake-up, I didn't believe him. I thought we might get the same old shit. I thought we might get something like Baron Corbin coming out and just having having him being beaten up again exactly like he was at TLC. Same old shit. I thought we would have long promo segments that didn't lead to anything. The same old wrestlers that we've seen for weeks. Uh, long matches with advert breaks in between. Maybe finishing off with something crap like, um, I don't know, like a woman's gauntlet match to see who faces Ronda Rousey the next week just to ultimately lose to her, wasting hours and hours of valuable TV time across two weeks. But no, it wasn't the same old shit. What an unbelievable turnaround by WWE. They gave us exactly what they want. They said, we're going to change things and we're going to give you exactly what we want. And what do we want more than anything CM Punk is back and it does look like we are going to get a mega match at WrestleMania with CM Punk taking on Triple H. In addition to that, throughout the show, there were a number of vignettes introducing not only new wrestlers that were coming up from NXT, the top guys from NXT, the Velveteen Dream soon coming to the main roster. Velveteen Dream is he's the kind of guy that's just um, willing to go out there on a limb at all costs. Um, and I respect that. You know, he, he's willing to take the gamble. He's willing to take the risk. He's willing to lay it all on the line. You see it in his, uh, his choice of moves. You see it in everything that he does. You see it in his attire, the way he speaks, all of it. You see it in what he writes on his ass. <laughs> So that was the Triple H portion of the um, vignette talking about the debut of the Velveteen Dream. In addition to that, we got some returns. John Morrison re-signing with the WWE. Batista confirmed for the Royal Rumble. And the big one, of course, the vignette of the NWO returning to Raw. Not as active wrestlers, Hulk Hogan, Hall and Nash made it clear that they would be recruiting from the roster new members for a new NWO. This is going to be an exciting, fresh storyline with Hall, Nash and Hogan 
walking around the WWE looking for new superstars to formulate a brand new NWO. This is sure to be a massive storyline as we see what the NWO are going to do over the next coming weeks, who they are going to take an interest in, and if the plans are for them to take over Raw. That was a hint that they dropped in, and um, this is an interesting storyline because obviously this is part of the shakeup. But in the Hulk Hogan promo, he did allude to once again finding men to be on the NWO that would be able to instigate a takeover and some bitterness about being left on the sidelines for three years. Very, very clever use there of Hulk Hogan holding some resentment from the fact that WWE left him on the sidelines and turning it into a storyline. So not bringing Hulk Hogan back as a full-fledged yellow and red heel, using the NWO thing and then using this to put over brand new superstars as well because the NWO colours are obviously going to make a superstar out of anybody that has chosen to be in the NWO. The following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. We're back. <laughs> we haven't stirred anything up in a long time. Let's stir the pot. Still got my swag around and I got my Star K97. <laughs> So that was the NWO return promo, a snippet from it. Didn't want to put the whole thing on. Don't want this podcast to go long. So I want to save room now for the promo that I felt was the best promo that they aired during the show, during Raw. Despite the fact that we saw CM Punk at the top of the show interrupting Triple H and what looks like setting up a WrestleMania match with Triple H, maybe that could be the main event. I still think that the CM Punk promo that aired during Raw was one of the best promos that they've done in years. It gave me absolute goosebumps. We saw Punk at the top of the show, and then this promo about his return aired a couple of times during Raw. And uh, and yeah, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how they, they do this. Obviously, WWE can mess this up, but it's not very often that you get Vince McMahon coming in at the top of the show ordering a shake-up, then we get these returns promised, we see CM Punk at the top of the show, we see good matches throughout the show, not the same old shit throughout. I felt the match-up between Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose was far better than the night before, took away that horrible stench of that crappy match they had at TLC, and of course, it made a lot more sense seeing as the two guys were in a fucking blood feud, and here on Raw, they decided to put them in a street fight in the main event, which is what it always should have been in the first place. Five-star match with Dean Ambrose retaining the Intercontinental title. And of course, the big announcement of the women's tag team titles actually did something about this, actually did shake something up, actually had women from SmackDown on this show, showing that it was a true shake-up and began those qualifying matches. This was a can't-miss edition of Raw and set up a really good week here in the WWE. I am going to close out this podcast with that promo that they aired as CM Punk returns to the WWE this week on Raw. Do you think that regardless of what federation it was, we'll ever see you in a professional wrestling capacity again? Um, But, you know, it it, it is one of those never say never things. Uh, I just like to cover all my bases just so some internet dweeb isn't going to be like, you said you'd never wrestle again. But, you know, you never know. I, I could pop up here and there. Everybody's attention now. A year and a half ago, I said that I was just a spoke on the wheel. Fast forward to now, today, right now, I'm not a spoke on the wheel. And I'm in the big leagues, and I'm swinging for the fence. When you step in the ring, your arms are just too short to box with God. I'm going to kick your ass because I'm the best in the world. You just bit off more than you can chew. I'm the 